thank you for the invitation to present at the BRACE conference. Uh, we all know there have been some real challenges with uh, with COVID in terms of keeping research on the road, um, but also there have been a few opportunities, and I just wanted to tell you about a few of the things that, that we've been doing. Um, in terms of co the COVID-related dementia or cognitive health focus thing, um, we've been running a COVID digital nursing home training program, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, as part of our online protect platform, we've also been uh, further validating a, a self-administration neuropsychological uh, computerized uh, package um, and in addition uh, we've been running a virtual um, RCT of vitamin D so I'll just tell you a little bit about those about those those projects um, so to start with uh, obviously we know there's been a lot of challenges for care homes during COVID uh, the threat directly to the health of residents and staff um, there's been a big increase in mortality for residents partly due to COVID outbreaks but also due to uh, not failure to access other treatments and support that are needed a lot of illness and sickness of staff stress and burnout for staff um, more limited support from specialist services and in isolation perhaps not the networking that care homes have, are usually had but also again reverting to increased use of antipsychotics and other psychotropics over this period so it felt like the, there was some urgent problems that that needed tackling to try and better support care homes one of the programs that we've undertaken in the past is a, is a program called weld which is a person-centered care training program with personalized activities uh, where we've trained that in person to enable dementia champions to then train it within care homes and, and deliver the program and we've evaluated that in several rcts the largest was a nine-month rct you can see the results here on the screen uh, demonstrating that the intervention uh, significantly improved quality of life and neuropsychiatric symptoms in residents with dementia compared to treatment as usual uh, also improved the quality of care and actually cost less than, than usual care but that was delivered in person uh, and what we've really been thinking about to try and allow this to be implemented more widely is can this be adapted into a, a digital format so initially uh, one of my colleagues joanne mcdermott led uh, a study looking at a, a digital version of weld with virtual coaching uh, a relatively small pilot study in uh, just over 20 care homes and that was shown again that that over four months of delivery uh, it, there were significant benefits with the package compared to treatment as usual um, so this was kind of all very promising um, and during covid we've looked at how we can adapt that further so as part of the COVID rapid response funding program from UKRI, um, we put forward a trial which was uh, fortunately funded to look at further augmenting this, this digital platform with virtual coaching to include some additional platforms for virtual networking and uh, sharing of best practice between care homes. Um, and to deliver that in an RCT that was evaluating it over four months compared to, to treatment as usual. Um, and we were aiming for about 150 care homes taking part in the program. So this is just a, a look at sort of what some of those materials uh, look like. Um, and hopefully uh, we've been able to improve the digital materials from our pilot. We field tested it already as part of this program in 160 care homes and had good responses. And that's allowed us to, to further uh, adapt this and to change it into uh, really small chunks so that it's very workable, it's very visual based, so it doesn't rely an awful lot on language skills. And so far it seems to have been very accessible for, for care staff and well received. So the care home we has a controlled trial. We've now recruited the, the number of homes. Uh, we're just getting the baseline assessments completed over the next month. Uh, and then we should have some results next next spring. So we're very, very excited about the opportunity to improve this digital platform and also to evaluate it in a, a, a significant RCT. Okay, so that's the, the nursing home work. One of the other things we've been doing is the Protect uh, platform. Uh, this is a, an online platform for people over the age of 50. Uh, we've been running it for about five years with very good levels of engagement. Um, the platform is a cohort study where people complete annual assessments, including computerized neuropsychology and various other health measures and, and other areas of interest. But in addition, there's nested clinical trials that have allowed us to look at things like uh, cognitive training, self-directed exercise. 
So one of the things we've been able to do uh, over the pandemic is have a look at the impact on cognition uh, for participants on the protect on the protect program. Uh, and we've also been able to complete some more detailed uh, analysis looking at the trajectory of change over the full five years rather than over the uh, over the, just the last year. Um, so what I'll show you here is just as an example is one aspect of cognition, attention, and looking at it uh, from since before and subsequent to uh, the lockdown with COVID. So this isn't looking at direct COVID infections, this is looking at the social milieu, the lockdown, how that's impacted uh, on people's cognitive health. And you can see from the diagram there that actually there has been a significant decline in people's cognitive health. Um, in people with normal cognition to start with, that was mainly in the 60 to 69 year olds, we saw that. In people with early cognitive impairment, there was a more consistent pattern in both people with age associated cognitive decline, so one standard deviation away from normal cognitive performance, and in the people with mild cognitive impairment. Um, but the most striking thing of all was the was the interaction between cognitive health and mental health. About 25% more people reached threshold levels for depression or anxiety over the, the course of the pandemic. And that was really a massive mediating factor in explaining the accelerated cognitive decline. So we know in particular that people with early cognitive impairment are already at high risk of depression and anxiety. And I think what this shows is that that was really a very, very key mediating factor over the pandemic, but hopefully gives us some good clues as well as to how we can begin to, to help mitigate that and to, um, and to perhaps help improve people's cognition with some fairly straightforward measures. One of the other things that we've been doing is further work to validate our flame battery. So flame is a computerized online battery. It's self-administered on a tablet or laptop. Um, it's using very well used tests that are, that are widely used and are usually as part of, of other batteries. Um, but we've been able to do two things. One is that we've been able to refine the test to concentrate on the tests that don't have learning effects. Uh, we've been able to improve the reaction time sensitivity so that it's now very, very accurate. Um, and also we've been able to validate this as a self-administered test as all other similar tests uh, require a, a researcher or a practitioner to sit alongside somebody whilst they're doing the, doing the evaluations, whereas this is fully self-directed. And it's available in, in quite a few languages as well as English as part of our international expansion of PROTECT. So we've been able to uh, look at this over, for, uh, over a, a longitudinal study within the PROTECT program. Um, for the main data, we evaluated it over two years. And as you can see, had a very good level of engagement with uh, well over 80% of participants who completed the initial assessments, completing the assessments of two years as well. So I'm just gonna give you a, a few of the sort of headlines. As you would expect, there's a significant difference at baseline on the main domains between people with early cognitive impairment and those with normal cognition. Um, that's not unexpected. I mean, it's obviously what you would expect, but it's a good first step. What's perhaps more important is looking at the, uh, the longitudinal change. And you can see that there's actually very reliable uh, and consistent uh, change over time uh, on all of the key domains and on the total composite score, um, both between people with, uh, with um, stage two, so that would be equivalent to age-associated cognitive decline, and stage three, preclinical dementia, which would be equivalent to MCI. And in fact, if you look at the sensitivity of that, um, for standard scales like the ADAS-COG, you'd need about um, 450 people per treatment arm to detect a 25% treatment effect because these measures don't have learning effects because that you can repeat them without with, and therefore improve the sensitivity and because they capture that millisecond reaction time very accurately. You'd need about 100 people per treatment arm to measure a 25% treatment effect. So this can be self-administered at home, giving a lot more flexibility with how we deliver trials, particularly during COVID, but also it, it could achieve a really significant step change in how we run uh, phase two trials by reducing the required sample sizes for these studies. Um, one of the other criticisms of sensitive computerized neuropsychology has been that it doesn't equate with real world measures like function. Uh, but the other thing we've been able to show as part of this is that actually the changes in cognition correlate really well with the changes in instrumental activities of daily living. 
again, giving confidence that this is a, a meaningful measure that is associated with functional as well as cognitive measures. So we've been really pleased with the way this has been able to develop. I think COVID has really shown the importance of self-administered cognitive tests. Um, and we feel there's lots of opportunities for this going forward, and we're already using this in uh, a number of clinical trials at the moment, some of our own academic trials and also some uh, commercial trials. And then to, to finish, I just wanted to talk a little bit about vitamin D. Um, the importance of vitamin D as a potential risk factor for dementia has really been highlighted through a whole series of studies from by my colleague David Llewellyn, uh, who's shown this very clearly in large epidemiological cohorts. So what we've been able to do uh, uh, with funding from the, uh, the Melton Foundation is launch a randomized controlled trial in people who've got predictors uh, suggesting that they're likely to have low vitamin D and also have um, early cognitive impairment. And these individuals will be participating in this, in this randomized study comparing vitamin D with placebo for uh, 36 months. And we've been recruiting over the period of COVID. Um, and actually during COVID when it's been very difficult to recruit for traditional trials, um, this trial using the Protect platform, we've managed to recruit all 584 participants successfully. Um, the safety monitoring has worked very well. The assessments have worked very well, and we've had very good engagement of participants. So I think it really shows that, uh, as well as the importance of this particular trial, which we're very excited to start seeing results from, and we should have the first results by the middle of next year at 12 months. Uh, but in addition to that, as a proof of concept, I think it really shows that you can run trials of nutraceuticals, vitamins, and potentially even safe pharmaceutical products in a pretty much fully uh, virtual sort of environment and run it efficiently and safely, which dramatically reduces the time for recruitment and dramatically reduces the cost of these trials. Um, so that was it, really. I wanted to give you a little bit of a whistle-stop tour of the few of the things that we've done. I hope that's been of some interest and very happy to take any questions. Thank you very much.